by welcoming Kate, who is the Assistant Commissioner for the Queensland Building and Construction Commission. Kate, welcome and thank you once again for joining us this morning. I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'd first like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we are all situated today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Thank you, Michael and Janelle, for inviting me to participate in this Helix Legal Webinar. Today's topic that I'm going to speak about is the here and now of the regulation of the construction industry in Queensland. So talking about um, our regulation, I'll give you a preview of our regulatory strategy for the next four years, which is near finalisation. The QBCC, as the regulator for the building and construction industry, is an independent statutory authority. Over the next four years, we will be focusing on four identified goals which address the risks that we see in the building industry. So those four goals are protecting people from physical or financial harm, building quality and control, ensuring people are protected against non-compliant, unsafe and unfit buildings, product integrity, ensuring we're all protected against unsafe or non-conforming building products, and building industry fairness, making sure that our licensees and the broader industry are protected against financial harm in their work environment. These four goals will help us to prioritise our efforts and resources and inform industry about our regulatory focus. So to give you an overview of the regulation of the sector in Queensland, uh, we've had a regulator for over 30 years in this state. Uh, we have a dynamic sector whether it's the type of construction, where the buildings are going up, uh, the changing landscape of regulation, um, it changes all the time. Success of the construction sector has a strong impact on the success of the Queensland economy. With 5 million people currently living in Queensland, more than 220,000 of those residents working in the construction sector, the QBCC has an important task in regulating the industry. We have some of the greatest protections for subcontractors and homeowners in the country. For some time, the regulator was really only a complaints and licensing body. The QBCC's role in regulating behaviour has increased with changes in the industry. We're expected now to anticipate problems, remove recidivist offenders and take action to prevent harm. Our role has expanded to investigating non-conforming building products, and we have the legislative ability to investigate and potentially take action against all those in the building product supply chain, such as manufacturers, suppliers, importers, and installers. The licensing system in Queensland is far reaching and historically a stricter regime than other jurisdictions. We use licensing as a regulatory tool to ensure licensees maintain appropriate standards of behaviour and skill and maintain the financial capacity to pay subcontractors and suppliers. A future regulatory strategy is based on an identification and evaluation of risks and harms. The QBCC's role is to assess the identified risks and harms and ascertain how we will predict, detect, prevent and mitigate harm. Goal four of the strategy, building industry fairness, is of most relevance to today's discussion. The QBCC's proposed outputs um, for this goal are to use data analytics and insights to detect at an earlier stage licensees at risk of insolvency to reduce the impact on the sector. Continue to use licensing as a regulatory tool to check that people entering the industry are financially sound. Hold developers and other entities engaging a builder or tradesperson accountable to pay on time and in full or the amount properly scheduled. Take appropriate action so debts owed are paid in full. Take action so retention amounts or security held are discharged in accordance with the contractual or legal entitlements. And undertake a financial health check of the industry to ensure industry has the capital to operate financially sound businesses. So the first output centres around our use of analytics and insights. We're moving to become an insights-driven regulator. The QBCC is becoming a more data-driven organisation. We've taken giant strides towards that goal. A number of significant projects are underway in this space, including a web search and discovery tool 
to enable insights-driven investigation of unlicensed advertising on electronic and social media platforms. This tool um, is in the final stages of testing and will enable, in a matter of hours, uh, the search of thousands of electronic ads by tradespeople and those purporting to be tradespeople and match that data against the QBCC data to detect potential unlicensed activity. Uh, this tool is very exciting for us because we're going to be able to match not only names but things like um, mobile phone numbers or addresses to try and ascertain is someone advertising that we have on our system somewhere and then try and match that or, or ascertain that we actually can't match it. We then will have our compliance officers do a manual review um, of the list of the potential offenders to determine those that are actually unlicensed and advertising to do work for which they need a licence. Along with those that are licensed but have failed to include the QBCC licence number in the ad as is required. We'll also re-audit those found to be non-compliant to check the unlawful behaviour is not continuing. Increased penalties can be expected for those exhibiting recidivist behaviour. Um, we'll also be focusing on entities who were licensed um, and they've had their licence cancelled or suspended to make sure they're not continuing to carry out building work without an active licence. Um, so in addition, we are developing an early warning detection tool um, to help us detect at an earlier stage problematic behaviours and to protect subcontractors and small companies from the effects of insolvencies. So this tool uh, will ingest data from um, entities like the Building Industry Credit Bureau and Ilion and combine it with our QBCC data to provide the most comprehensive view to date on the financial health of licensees and the risks. The tool will allow for the better targeting of audits to check compliance with the MFR, um, leading to more effective regulatory intervention with the aim of preventing financial harm to subcontractors and suppliers. So this view that you're seeing here um, is a dashboard and it shows like it's a snapshot showing how this tool will work um, to identify a risk factor for our licensees. So we'll look at data such as the timeframes for trade payments and court actions on foot um, and give us an idea. So where trade payments are blowing out, for instance, that gives us you know, a higher risk for that particular entity. So the next um, snapshot that we'll move on to, um, this one's kind of my favourite, and it shows we've had to take out all the names, um, but that little sort of spider web or network shows the relationships um, that the tool will produce. So it's related entities and um, things like subsidiaries, um, as well as directors, secretaries, senior employees of the entity and its related entities. So red indicates a higher risk, um, amber and then green is okay. So you can sort of see that the more that those red, the higher the risk and the more that's a flag for us that we want to actually investigate this entity further and maybe you know, ask for some financial information, et cetera. Um, so, Talking about MFR, um, financial checks and audits of those identified as at risk are critical to protecting the industry from financial failures. We can't prevent every insolvency, but we can use data and insights to check whether entities are meeting the minimum financial requirements and to minimise the level of debt incurred. Under changes to the minimum financial requirements that commenced last year, Licensees in categories four to seven, so that's those with an annual turnover over $30 million, um, were required to provide their annual financial information or annual reporting by 31 March 2019 to show that they met the MFR. The second tranche of the changes required all contractor grade licensees uh, to provide their annual financial information by 31 December 2019. Uh, 31 December is the annual reporting day going forward for most licensees. You can also apply to the QBCC to alter your annual reporting day. These changes to the MFR framework allow the QBCC to monitor how its licensed contractors are tracking financially and whether they have the capital to operate a financially sound business. There's two main things uh, licensees have to do to comply with the MFR. First, lodge the annual um, reporting information. And secondly, meet the MFR, so that is have sufficient working capital for turnover. There's other um, obligations, such as notifying the QBCC of an increase of maximum revenue of more than 10% um, and a decrease in net tangible assets of 30% or a decrease of 20% in your NTA if you're category 4 to 7. Um, then you have to ensure that you actually meet the MFR with your new revenue or NTA, such as maintaining sufficient assets to cover the turnover that you're actually carrying out. Um, 
So an MFR report is something that's much more complicated um, than just annual reporting. So annual reporting is like a snapshot financial health check and an MFR report um, is a report signed by an independent accountant um, and it's only required for specific circumstances such as um, when you first apply for a licence, if, if your NTA decreases by more than 30%, if your max revenue increases by more than 10%, if there's some significant change in your business structure, if you're audited and some other sort of circumstances that are set out on that slide. Um, in terms of annual reporting to date, over 76% of licensees have lodged their annual reporting information for that 31 December um, date. Almost all licensees in categories two to seven have now lodged, which is fantastic. So it's the smaller end of town that are still lagging behind. For licensees who have not lodged their annual reporting information, we first give a notice of proposed license condition of no new building work. So if you receive a notice like that from us, you must provide your annual reporting information or contact us if you think you've already provided it. If we don't receive that, the annual reporting information or some contact from you, we'll proceed to impose a condition of no new building work on your licence. To date, the QBCC has imposed over 300 licence conditions of no new work on licensees in categories two to seven. 157 show cause notices have been issued to licensees in those categories and six licences have been suspended for non-lodgement to date for both reporting dates in 2019. Only three licences have been cancelled for non-lodgement to date. Where a licensee has lodged their annual reporting information but is not meeting the MFR, we do have a different approach. Um, in late 2019, we published a regulatory guide for the 31 December 2019 annual reporting day. In that guide, we stated that we'd have a different regulatory approach for licensees in categories four to seven, so bigger end of town, versus licensees in categories SC1 to category three, so that's up to the turnover of 30 million. For that second group of licensees, um, we, give, we will give them until 31 December this year to have the required working capital for their turnover. So that's the case unless there's another regulatory breach going on, such as a money's owed complaint or not paying an adjudicated amount, in which case bets are off and we can take action for not meeting MFR as well. For licensees in categories four to seven, um, we take a regulatory action for not meeting MFR, such as um, a notice to show cause as to why we shouldn't suspend the licence. Um, now, if you receive a notice to show cause for not meeting MFR, that's your cue to take action. So that gives an opportunity for the licensee to actually meet the MFR before we go and suspend that licence. We can't give an open-ended timeframe and if compliance is not demonstrated in a reasonable timeframe, then we may take action to suspend the licence until the licensee meets the MFR. To date, we have issued 96 show cause notices and six licences have been suspended for not meeting the MFR in categories four to seven in relation to that 31 December 2019 annual reporting day. From the 31 March 2019 reporting day, the QBCC issued 147 show cause notices for failing to meet MFR, suspended 47 licences and cancelled 14. Um, as well as the potentially disastrous consequences for creditors when a licensee becomes insolvent, there's also consequences for those involved in the company um, that goes under. So directors, secretaries and influential persons for companies will be excluded from positions of influence in construction companies or from holding certain licences themselves for three years. The same applies to individual licensees who become bankrupt. Someone who's involved in a second insolvency event for a construction company faces permanent exclusion from the industry. Moving to licensing. Um, there's over 100,000 licensed entities regulated by the QBCC. Many of those hold multiple categories of license. Each year, we receive over 5,000 applications for a license from entities who were not previously licensed with the QBCC, so new people to the industry. Um, in addition to licensing building and trade contractors, certifiers, plumbers, pool safety inspectors and fire protection trades, there's now a new licensing framework for mechanical services trades. So um, this includes the new classes of medical gas and mechanical plumbing, as well as the existing licensed class of air conditioning and re refrigeration. 
We're currently working hard to issue hundreds of mechanical services contractor and nominee license class licenses um, before the 1 July 2020 deadline, which is looming for existing businesses. Workers will have until 1 January 2022 to obtain their occupational license. The licensing is an effective regulatory tool. Um, each year, we cancel thousands of licenses for various reasons, including breaches of the MFR, uh, breach of a license condition, not having a nominee when required, providing false or misleading information to the QBCC, committing multiple offences with a loss of more than 30 demerit points in a three-year period, failing to pay renewal fees, uh, failing to pay a debt owing, insol and insolvency leading to exclusion. We, of course, also cancel licences on voluntary surrender. We're continually, continually looking to improve our regulatory activities and focusing our effort on the highest risk of the worst harms. For example, through our monies owed complaint process, last month alone, more than a million dollars was recovered in payments to suppliers and subcontractors following proposed licensing actions, such as suspension for non-payment of debts owing. We're also commencing licensing action for those licensees with a failure to rectify defective work and associated financial penalty that remains unpaid. In addition, we have a range of measures available under disciplinary action provisions of the QBCC Act, uh, which are useful, for example, for licensee breaches of the work, work Health Safety Act. Actions we can take include imposing a license condition, for example, to undertake safety-related educational course, provide a safety assurance report, and potentially propose suspension for serious safety matters. Other action we take in relation to licensing is working with entities such as the Real Estate Institute of Queensland, um, who've been willing to include QBCC articles on the requirement for plumbing work to be carried out by a licensed plumber and the need for um, alternative toileting devices to be watermarked products, which is topical during COVID-19. Uh, watermark means compliant with our laws and safety use, um, and those products must be installed by a licensed plumber. We've also worked with retailers of plumbing products in Queensland to include in-store signage to inform consumers of the requirement to engage a licensed plumber and the requirement to lodge a Form 4 of notifiable work when um, items such as a hot water heater are installed. So moving on to talking about the future, I can't really talk about the here and now without talking about impacts of COVID-19 on the industry. Industry associations predict a slump in construction activity over the next um, six to 12 months, despite a welcome stimulus package from both state and federal governments. The QBCC currently is not seeing much change in behaviours at this time. We're continuing to receive licence applications and renewals. Um, we're receiving complaints of defective work and home warranty insurance premium payments. So for us at this time, it's business as usual. However, in preparation for any potential widespread impacts, the QVCC is working with an industry forum, which is a subgroup of the Ministerial Construction Council, on a framework for determining eligibility for potentially different regulatory approaches for those impacted by COVID-19. Um, any framework produced uh, from that industry forum would be put to government for consideration to ensure a consistent approach in Queensland to the impacts of the pandemic. So to close out, um, we've seen many changes in the regulation of the industry in Queensland. New laws have commenced under the Queensland Building Plan and more changes are on the way with the Building Industry Fairness and Other Legislation Amendment Bill or BFOLA before Parliament. As most of you will be aware, that bill proposes significant changes to project bank accounts or statutory trusts. It's proposed the QBCC will regulate the statutory trust framework with broader auditing powers and requirements for trust account training for industry. The statutory trust framework is proposed to be expanded over phased introduction stages to pub, um, both public and private sector projects over a million dollars eventually. We're preparing for these changes amongst others and have planned for these in our regu regulatory strategy. So watch this space. If you have any queries about a particular aspect of the way we regulate the industry, the easiest way to contact us is via the contact page on our website, www.qbcc.qld.gov.au. So thank you, and I will hand back to Janelle and Michael.